Podcast. Pod, podcast. 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 Pod, pod, podcast. Yeah, welcome to the Racer X Exhaust Podcast brought to you by Yoshimura. I am Jason Wygant here on the Racer X Podcast Network. We have a variety of shows for you. The Moto Marketing Podcast, the Main Event Moto Podcast, which is pretty good despite the host. And a lot of other cool things for you on here, so just subscribe. I don't think you can like. I think that's a YouTube thing. I don't know. Just subscribe and you'll get all the podcasts that we've got coming your way. Today, coming your way, an interview with the Jet, Jet Lawrence. Big news this week, even though we already kind of knew this was going to happen, it was still cool to see it in the flesh. Jet Lawrence and his brother Hunter have found factory Honda HRC, or as they would say, HRC. That's the Australian in them. Yes, the Geico Honda team is gone, and two 250 riders will now pit out of the factory Honda truck. But as I found out in this interview with Jet Lawrence, some of the Geico Honda staff is moving over there with them, so they'll have some experts in the 250s over there with them. And it seems like everyone else on the Geico team has found a place. Jeremy Martin, I talked to him this week. I'll have a podcast on him upcoming. He's now back to Star Racing, which is shocking. I still cannot believe this. It was not a good ending for Jeremy and Star a couple of years ago, and now he's back there. Joe Shimoda is going to be on Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki. I don't know why it hasn't been announced yet. And Carson Mumford is now on the Chaparral FXR Honda team. That's what we call in the pits the Michael Lindsay team. Michael Lindsay used to work at Vital MX. Now he does his own media stuff. Then he started a team. So everyone on the squad has found a spot, but maybe the most coveted is these factory Honda slots, which are now back. Honda hasn't raced the 125 or 250F class in a long time, but they're doing it with the Lawrence brothers. Also big news for Jet that he's got a Red Bull deal. So you can tell that they're looking at him as one of their pre premier athletes going into the future. And they put out a really cool video on YouTube this week where they basically cut a super cross track cut all the obstacles down to maybe a third width-wise, and he had to try to do a super cross track with jumps that are three and a half to four feet wide. Also, this podcast is brought to you by MX Tech Suspension, manufacturing professional aftermarket suspension for riders who want excellent comfort and control. Quality engineering is based on a lifetime of specializing in dirt bike suspension, and through that, they have developed the Lucky Fork dual springs, dual cartridges, huck valves, and ultra lightweight. The latest in technology and coatings delivers maximum performance. That's what MX Tech utilizes. They got the lightest shock available when you consider that it's got uh, this kind of technology packed in it. You definitely want to check it out. So head over to mx-tech.com for more. As for Yoshimura, look, the Geico Honda team, the factory Honda team, regardless of what team the Lawrence brothers are racing for, they will have Yoshimura exhaust the RS-12 system off of the back of their bikes. Need I say more? That's the choice of Factory Honda here and also with Tim Geyser's World Championship campaign in Europe. All right, let's get to the jet. We finally get to talk about this Honda deal and everything else that's happened in his life over the last year. And also some cool stories about, yes, living and training with Ken Roxon's dad during his time in Europe, which is just an amazing full circle story that he is now Ken Roxon's teammate. Is this the jet? Yeah, what's going on, Jason? Hey, Appreciate the time. Thanks for hooking me up. No problem. Hey, here's what I'm wondering. Guys your age, is the yeah. phone really used for phone conversations like this? Or is it pretty much just a tool for like social media and texting and things like that? Um, anything really. <laughs> okay, all right. You do still actually talk to people using the phone? Yeah, I do. I talk to my friends in there. Okay. I didn't know if like we've passed that point and it's like, nah, man, we're, we're sending each other snaps and Texting and oh no, yeah. I'm terrible with texting. I suck. I just call people. Oh really? See, I, that's I just learned yeah. something. I would have thought it was 180 degrees the opposite. No, I'm I'm a I'm a call. I'll Facetime my friends and that stuff. Texting, I'm like yeah. Oh. I will use Snapchat, but I'll send like a video of me talking. I can't do the texting. It takes too much time. Oh okay. All right. So if I need info, I'm actually better off going old school and calling. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Basically. Oh, just learn something. All right, you got a few minutes to chat here. Legit. Yeah, for sure. All right, look, you're like the star of the week. This uh, Honda deal is official. This Red Bull deal is official. Yeah. I, I know for yeah. you it's been in the works for a while, but you got to be pumped that you can actually like talk about this and, and, and celebrate <laughs> it a bit, dude. 
No, nah, yeah, it's definitely a big week for me, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. And this video, I'm sure you did that a while ago, but it's, it's dude, that it's pretty popular. <laughs> yeah. I, I haven't got to, I've only watched it like once. For real? Like once it came out and that stuff. So I haven't been watching the views at all or nothing. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I probably should pay attention since it's my video. <laughs> yeah. Um, dude, so the, what, f- what is it, four foot wide? Supercross track? Is that how wide it was? Um, no, it was different all over the place. Oh, like okay. Some off ramps were like three foot, I think three and a half feet. Um, some rhythm lanes, I think the rhythm lanes were like four feet. Uh, okay. Down ramps were like, I think six, six to seven feet just for like safety for landing. But um, okay. no, I think most was like four feet in the rhythms and that. Look, so how different does that feel? Because I don't know. If you're at a Supercross test track and they get the old goat trail going where everybody runs the same line, is it actually that wide and it just feels weird doing this? Or is it actually legitimately hard to keep the bike in that narrow of a, of a space? Well, when you just do it once, it's not too bad. Like When you probably do a moto, it's a lot more easier, I feel like, where this one would get, you'd go do one run, run so you'd lose your, uh, your rhythm okay. a bit. But no, I was pretty. I was pretty confident in myself not to go off. I had a few close <laughs> moments where, like, I landed on the on one of the lights, like uh, uh, on the the most sketchiest one was the finish line double. The uh, up ramp didn't line up with the down ramp at all, so I was jumping across. And one time I didn't jump up uh, over enough, and I landed right on the edge, <laughs> knocked the light off, and that. <laughs> you know what's funny to me because like. Look, you're still actually relatively new to Supercross. It's been like a year. Um, so was it almost a little challenging at all? Or are you at the point where whatever track somebody builds, whatever obstacle it is, you kind of shrug it off? Or are there still a bit of a learning curve with Supercross for you? Mm, there's always a learning curve with, with uh, Supercross, I feel like. But no, I'm definitely starting to be uh, more, more settled and more comfortable in Supercross than I, than I, am, than I was last year. Yeah, so are you doing the whole thing? Are you riding, prepare, everything's good, and you're prepping and riding test track all the time? Yep, I uh, I just went to Lake Elsinore yesterday. Um, so I was actually finally able to ride a different track. So I've just been riding the Honda track. Yep. Until the Red Bull and Honda thing goes out. So as soon as that got out, I'm like, yep, I'm going to a new <laughs> track. <laughs> oh, you had to be in hiding. Yeah, I was basically hiding. No photos, no... Uh, <laughs> No, nothing. And yeah, yesterday when I did the live, I uh, I had my Red Bull hat on the table and I didn't even think of it. And I was doing like going around my bike and apparently someone just seen a glimpse of it. I'm like, oh, crap. And they, they kept on saying, oh, is that a Red Bull hat? I'm like, no, nah, what, what do you mean Red Bull hat? <laughs> oh, were you like five minutes too early? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so were you doing, you were at the Honda test track at this time last year also? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I was. Right. So how does it compare? Like, like you're so established, it seems, but again, it's really going in your second year and you only raced what two and a half times last year. So have you made huge gains? Is it still coming, being better and better and better? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm way better than I was last year. That's for sure. When I started, I, I picked it up really quick and I feel like I'm way better. I'm way more confident in the whoops. My rhythms are faster. My turns are getting there. It's a little hard to do the turns fast when it's bone dry at the Honda test. Okay. <laughs> but uh, when I have ruts, yeah, my turns are getting fast, and I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm way better, another level up from last year, and I, and I have way more, way more speed to come when I, uh, for next, for next year for the season. Yeah. By the time January comes, you, you think there's gains to be made. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm gonna have big gains. <laughs> yeah, because look, I mean, experience helps, and you kind of messed, you missed a bunch of races at the end of the year last year. So, how do you look at this? Are you like, all right, I'm here to win races and win a title, or are you still in the I'm learning stuff phase? I feel like I've uh, I've raced enough this year to learn most. All right, things. obviously, I'm never going to stop learning, and yeah, next year, I've, like, I'm not going to say if I'm feeling good, but when I if I'm feeling what well, well, when I'm feeling good, I'm definitely going to go for that win and. And who knows? I might just have a really good season, get get a title, get a title under my belt already. Or I can't really say what I can do. Well, here's what's impressive. I gotta say, I think everyone expected, even outdoors, would be like, you're gonna see some moments from Jet Rigo super fast, and then you're gonna see some cartwheels. But you actually didn't do that. 
pretty much every moto was solid. So maybe we need to take the always young part out. Do you see yourself as more of a generally smooth, consistent guy? Because outdoors, you didn't really have any crazy moments. Yeah, uh, like ever, everyone always, I've always heard everyone say rookies are always going to crash right. and injure themselves first in. Yeah, I did. I learned my lesson early, but um, I feel like that wasn't much of a, it probably was a bit of a rookie mistake, but it was more of not a stupid mistake. It was more of trying to go for my first win, which not many rookies can do. And yeah, and yeah people said I was really inconsistent. Cause yeah, I was in Supercross. I went ninth, second, and ninth, and with my crash because I lapped up to like 10th or something. But, um, and then the other Supercross, I was all over the place. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to work. I'm going to prove people wrong that I can be consistent and I'll, I'll show them. And yeah, I, I feel like I was really consistent in the outdoors. And if I didn't have my DNF at Loretta's, the two DNFs, I would have got third in the championship. Yeah. Yeah. And you get to end the year of the win. Like, do you, does that make a big difference? I, I think you're pretty confident anyway. But does that make a difference to have like tucked that in your pocket? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's definitely good because now I feel like I'm just going to be living rent free in everyone's head after that round, and they know last year that it was just it was my first year on Supercross, and I was already at that speed. So yep. yeah, I feel like I'm going to be living rent free in people's heads in uh once next year. Oh once next yeah, all right, they're going to be thinking about it. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, here, here's some crazy perspective. So a little over a year ago, you were in Australia for the Aussex Open. That feels like 10 years ago. That is crazy the way the world and probably your whole life and riding career has changed in that one year. Like, does it feel like a year ago or does it feel like 10 since Aussex Open? Oh, it, it does feel like a long time ago, that's for sure. It's, it's crazy how far it's come. And you were pretty good there. But obviously, the difference between that race and where you were by Anaheim 2 was, like, lightning quick. Yeah. 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 I went from uh, not, being, not being able to go through the woods clean, uh, <laughs> a main event, to being one of the fastest guys in, on the West Coast drip through the whoops. Dude, you passed Christian Craig once in whoops. Yeah, I was surprised. That I was not ready for it. I wasn't even planning on passing him there. Like, I, I, it just happened, and I'm like, okay, guess we're going past him then. Okay. Me, Christian. I'm, I surprised myself on that because, yeah, Christian's freaking good and whoop. So I was like, huh, guess yeah. I'm a whoop guy now. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, own it. Hey, so um, with this team thing, uh, you've ridden. Like, I, your brother, unfortunately, is hurt. He hasn't had a chance to ride this bike. Is it actually that much different? Is it like I was on Honda and now I'm still on Honda, or is it actually a bit of an adjustment and a change? It's the exact same bike from Geica. Oh, for real? Okay. <laughs> yeah, nothing different. We have the same people. I saw Ryan Cox here as my engine guy. We got Josh uh, as, a, as our team manager. I got my mechanic, Christian. Um, Ken came along, which is Hunter's new mechanic. So, And we got uh, Mike, our other engine guy, said, no, nah, nothing's really changed at all. The bike's still exactly the same. Like for the Red Bull shoot, I was still running a, a, a um, Geico Honda engine. That's why people... Spotting out, I had a Geico Hinson clutch cover huh. on it. Uh, so that's for real. Like, even Josh has moved over from, he was yeah. a team manager at Geico, and he's got a job over there. Yeah, he's, uh, like, the team manager of um, the 250 side. Wow. Yeah. Oh, oh hey, Jeff. No, it's sick. It's really cool. Oh, so Kehoe doesn't have to stay in the team manager's tower for, like, seven straight hours. No. <laughs> no, he doesn't. At least he can have a little break. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. They, so they did find jobs uh, for a few guys, and uh, yeah. and then for you, it's not that big a change. Yeah, for me, it was just uh, same. Everything's the same, really. Just I get to – I just got new teammates, really. Uh, well, only one, to be honest, because Chase, I've been teammates with him. That's right. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's just Kenny that's kind of new to the books and uh, then the rest of the HRC people. But, um, no, it's it still feels like home to me, basically. Oh, all right. That's that's cool. They, they put it together yeah. like that. Um. Did you ride with Ken at some point? Like, did you ride with him at the track last year and stuff, or is that part new? Uh, I rode with him a few times, I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, yeah, because I guess Honda Test Track, Honda Test Track, even if you were a Geico Honda, you were still there. Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we didn't get to ride many days with him, I think, because obviously he wanted his, uh, a lot, like, kind of days on his own. We had a little freeway, Hunter and I, because we obviously met him in – in Germany, that stuff. So he has a little bit of a soft spot for us, I would probably say. But um, 
No, I didn't, I didn't think I I rode with him much because he was more so in Florida last year for coming up uh, during see. the off season. Uh, wait, that's right. I forgot. Didn't you live at Ken's dad's house at one point? Yeah, I lived, uh, I was living by myself, just, uh, me and Heiko Klapka, Kenny's dad, for, like, months. I was there by myself. I had Steffi Rocks and, uh, come help me with the laundry and that stuff. So I would, do, I would try and do it every now and then, but I would be, I would be terrible and forget. So she was, like, my, my mum out there helping me with that. She would make food for me and that stuff. So I was only, like, 14 or 13 back then. Wow. That's amazing, full circle, small world story. Yeah. So when I found, and when he came, Kenny came out, so I obviously looked up to him. I thought it was sick. Yeah. Uh, why were you there alone? Where was the rest of your gang? Uh, my, I think my dad was with Hunter doing the GPS and that stuff. And, right. Um, I guess Heiko just wanted to spend some alone time with me, get like train me up because he helped Hunter when, the first year over there. And Hunter got really good, so I guess. Heiko wanted to do the same with me, and I spent um, heaps of time there. And yeah, like at the start of the year of the EMX 250, mm-hmm. I ended up not quali- qualifying. I spent more and more time out there. And at the end of the year, I went 1 1 at Assen. So yeah, it definitely helped me a lot. That's the Heiko training. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, have... guess I, just, I just really like winning the last rounds of all the, <laughs> all the races. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Have you and Kenny talked about this? Like, do you have stories now that you can match up on? Yeah, we all, we always talk about um, how Heiko is like in uh, in Germany and that stuff. With uh, in the morning, my breakfast, I would uh, wake up early, do a twenty minute row, and then for breakfast, I would uh, literally have Nutella on bakery bread that's been a little bit toasted with banana, and then I'd have a bucket of chocolate milk. <laughs> Like, this cut was massive. Like, it's a massive mug. And we'd make it every morning. And we'd do the same every single morning. It wasn't different. Nutella and, and chocolate milk, that's not too bad. That's not a big sacrifice. Yeah, that was the program. <laughs> All right. Uh, is Osho cool with that? I don't know about that. No, I don't think I'm on that anymore. But, um, <laughs> no. No, I'm back to I'm just my normal cereals in the morning. I just, I, just, I love my cereals, so I just always have that now. <laughs> Um, hey, real quick, this Red Bull deal, uh, that's always cool. Like, they only pick a handful of guys. Uh, it's not like a common thing that goes around. And then they did this cool video. But there's probably more stuff in the works. That's got to be pretty exciting to have a little little different angle compared to most guys. No, nah, it's definitely um, – it was cool. When we uh, when I first heard that we got offered by Red Bull, I was um, I was blown away. So I obviously, as a kid, I dreamed of um, – of getting sponsored by these people and having the same uh, image as like Ken Roxon with the on the Honda and Red mm-hmm. Bull and that stuff. So, and um, no, I was when I found out about it, I had other offers from other energy drinks, but I was as a as a kid, I was so set on Red Bull because I thought they were like amazing, and they still are like amazing now, and they're just way more. I feel like when you get when you see someone in a Red Bull helmet. You automatically think you don't see it every day. You go, wow, the, this guy, whatever he does as a job or as a sport, he must be really good at it because you never, you don't really see any Joe Blow just wearing a Red Bull helmet that's uh, just for fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And I would guess that you would partake, that you've had some Red Bulls in your time. I would, I'm just going to guess. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Joe and I would, uh, at 12 o'clock, we'd have meeting time. And it was over a Red Bull? <laughs> yeah, it was Red Bull. Well, well, I had I had the Red Bull uh, Coca Cola, but um, he would have the Red Bull. He has a full Red Bull fridge, so I, I was I was loving it. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, Heiko's got deep I, roots. And uh, the mm-hmm. funny thing was, I told him um when I was there, I uh, I actually said to him, I said one day I'm gonna have a Red Bull helmet and own one of these Red Bull fridges. So it's pretty cool to kind of um back it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, making it happen. Yeah, I guess Heiko's probably got some connections over there. His kid's been a Red Bull guy for like 12 years or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's for sure. Uh, all right, awesome. Well, this is cool stuff, and uh, I, I'm actually really thrilled. I did not know that that many of the guys on the team got a gig over there, so that makes it easier on you, and honestly, good for them, because look, we all knew you were going to have a ride, but it had to be rough times over there with everyone not knowing what the hell was going to happen. Maybe you knew you were going to be fine, but man, that had to be 
sad for a lot of people not wondering or wondering what yeah, was going to happen. It was it was definitely a rough time for the mechanics, and I kind of knew Christian was going to be okay because I knew wherever I was going to, uh, you know, wherever I was going to go, I would definitely take him. I uh, wasn't going to go to a different team uh, without taking him. So um, so yeah, but no, it was, but it will confuse. Well, not confuse. Like when we are uh, during the time when Jeff was trying to find a sponsor, we were. Uh, had the Red Bull deal done and that, like, we're trying to get that sorted. And then, um, because with Geico, they, uh, they're on the helmet. I couldn't do a full Red Bull painted helmet and that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, like, we're trying to figure out what we could do and with the Red Bull and that stuff. But um, it it kind of fell in our way a little bit more. Like, we got pretty lucky with the team, like, yeah. folding because I, would, I, would, I was able to get my own gear sponsor, my, uh, my Red Bull deal with the helmet and that stuff, and then with HRC. But then again, it kind of sucks that you see a, a truck leaving the paddock that's not going to come back again. <laughs> no, no, definitely not good. But at least that's about four or five guys uh, besides you and your brother that got something out of it. So yeah, better than it could have been. That's, that's cool. Boom. And with that, I was out of questions for Jet Lawrence. So there's the story. It is ridiculous to think that somehow the Lawrences, they went to Europe to try to find their way. And I believe that was their dad's theory that it seemed like the Australian riders who went through Europe first did better when they eventually ended up in the United States. You could certainly look at Chad Reed as an example. Uh, Michael Byrne spent less time there, but he had a good career in the U.S. And there were a lot of Australians that went straight from Australia to America, and it didn't pan out for them at all. So I know the Lawrences wanted to take that real struggle step through Europe, but I don't think they expected they'd end up living at Ken Roxon's dad's house. That's just bizarre to me. And now it's all come full circle that they're on the same team as Ken Roxham with Factory Honda, and I was delighted to hear that some of the good guys over there at the Geico Honda team ended up getting gigs with Factory Honda as well. So that's our show. Like I said, no matter what bikes the Lawrence brothers are on, they will have Yoshimura RS12 exhaust systems on their machine. So go to Yoshimura-RD.com and check out the Yoshimura exhaust system. They've got them for Hondas, got them for Suzuki's, YZ250F, now the Kawasaki KX450. Really good-looking system, sounds good, and big power gains, especially on that Cowie 450. I don't know what's going on there, but they made huge gains and also now available for the Husqvarna 501 Dual Sport and the 500 EXCF KTM Dual Sport as well. Big power gains there, but those bikes are super quiet stock. You put a Yoshi on there, you know you're going to like it a lot better. And also brought to you by MX Tech Suspension, professional aftermarket suspension for riders who want excellent comfort and control, quality engineering based on a lifetime of specializing in dirt bike suspension. They've developed the Lucky Fork, dual springs, dual cartridges, huck valves, ultra lightweight. MX Tech utilizes the latest in technology and coatings to deliver maximum performance or remaining the lightest shock available. Head over to mx-tech.com for more. That is this show, but we've got double Lawrence Brothers We'll be posting Jet and Hunter Lawrence podcast today. So listen to them both. And thanks. See you next week.